Hello. Very good. I'm here today to talk about one of the most exciting sales to take place here at Spink this year, and that is the second part of the Slaney collection of English coins. The first part we sold 12 years ago, and it was sensational. It made many record prices, and in those days, a million pounds was a lot of money for just English coins. Here we have the second part, equally sensational and hopefully now 12 years later considerably more valuable. There's a great range of coins and I've just brought along a few to, shall we say, whet your appetites. Here we have two very large silver coins, the largest ones produced in the English coin series, both made during the Civil War when Charles I had retreated from London to Oxford and set up a mint there. Of course, he needed money desperately to pay the troops that were fighting against the parliamentary forces. And the result is these massive pound coins. A pound of silver had to be a large coin because the coin had to, had to represent in the weight of silver the amount of one pound. Here we have the king on horseback trampling arms and armor beneath him and on the other side the famous declaration in the cartouche and this symbolizes what the civil war was all about the king protested that he was defending the liberties of the country he was defending the true religion of the country and he was acting in the name of liberty and parliament of course all those things were what his enemies claimed he was not doing and so this is a fantastic piece of propaganda the fact that it is also a very lovely coin, and it is very rare, and on top of that it is very valuable, makes it a highly desirable piece. If this pound doesn't sell for in excess of a hundred thousand pounds, I'd be very surprised. It's a super piece. Not everything is so big, uh, and not everything is so silver, because there are also many gold coins in the Slaney collection, and here on this tray, just uh, four coins out of the hundreds on offer. We have coins of George III and Queen Victoria, of the greatest beauty but also incredibly rare things. This is a pattern, a five pound piece, the first time this coin had appeared in England. Now, of course, the five pound is still made by the Royal Mint, but back in the reign of George III, it was an innovation. The coin was designed by an Italian, I'm afraid to say not an Englishman, um, but nevertheless, it's such a beautiful design, George and the Dragon, that this design by Pistrucci is still used today, 200 years later. The other large gold coin, here she is, this is of Queen Victoria, and when the young princess Victoria knew that she was going to succeed as queen, um, she was very modest. She said she would do her best for her country. But she said, I am but a young girl. What do I know? And, of course, the country was very sympathetic. William Wyon, the engraver, had an idea. He took the character of Una from Spencer's Fairy Queen, and he put Una, the young girl, on the back of the coin. And here she is, leading the lion. In the story, Una and the lion feature prominently in The Fairy Queen. The lion is tamed by Una's beauty. Here, Una is Queen Victoria, with her crown, her scepter, and she leads the lion, the Lion of England, who is tamed by her beauty. It was never used as a coin. It's quite radical to put a character from a fairy tale on a coin. And so it only remained a pattern piece, and the Georgian dragon was used instead. And as I said, it's still used today. But how lovely if we had had Una and the Lion on our coins as well. Okay, shall we get some more? I've brought a few down to show you. Here we have, let's see, oh yes, now this is an interesting one. Let's have a look at this. Here we have a very interesting coin. Small silver coin, contrast to the large pound. 
This is, some consider it the first shilling, or testoon, but this is Henry VII. And here we have a remarkable coin. It's got a portrait of the king in profile, and this is the first time this has happened on an English coin. And it is a realistic, and some would say a true Renaissance portrait of an English monarch. The continental coinages, especially the Italian coinages, showed just such a portrait already, because the Renaissance had already arrived in Italy a long time before. But this is the first time on an English coin. They're very rare, and this is one of the best examples in private hands. Of course, the reign of Henry VII um, was at the beginning of the 16th century, the century of the Renaissance in England, and also the century of the Reformation in England. So you could say that this coin kicks it all off. It's a super little coin, and it's the first of the silver coins in the Slaney sale next month. And of course, if you want to bid on any of these coins, you will be able to on Spink Live. You can see the coins on the Spink website, um, beautifully photographed. You can see enlarged photographs of them. You're welcome to come in and view them in the showroom. But above all, don't forget to bid on Spink Live. May the 14th. See you there.